This episode I'm switching it up a little bit I'm working with acrylics you'll see that I handle them very much like watercolor uh, through most of this painting so a lot of the techniques remain the same a lot of the brushwork I'm also painting what I call freestyle I really don't know where for sure this painting's headed <laughs> it's going to be a landscape i know that and it's trees and water so i have a little idea of what i'm doing but it's a lot like jazz i guess it's it's uh, i put down a color and or a shape and then i try to respond to that and see where it takes me. All the time thinking about design relationships and shape relationships and a lot of those things I've talked about in previous videos, this idea of Dhamma's majority, emphasis on minority, and repetition, making a thing interesting to look at. You'll see I love to paint with my hands, especially in the beginning of a painting. I use uh, my hands to move around the paint. Another thing that'll be helpful, I think, to those of you, no matter what media you're using, whether it's watercolor, acrylic, or oil, you can see in the beginning stages of this painting, I really keep my paint thin. Uh, the canvas here is pretty wet and I'm making sure that I don't put down a lot of paint. I, I do the same thing when I work in oil. I do the same thing when I work in watercolor. And then as I move through the painting, my paint layers get more opaque and thicker and thicker. Uh, but I'm trying to keep it really thin. One of the most difficult things to overcome in painting is when you put too much paint down and then you lose control uh, and it tends to just get thicker and thicker and thicker when when that happens and more and more uh, the the paint layers influence each other which you know w when you're working thin uh, you can control that a lot more easily I'd also like to talk to you about how you handle where your dominant area of interest is and then as you move away from that. And to do that, I need to talk about vision. There's really, in your whole field of vision, and you think about your field of vision, and it might be good if you just pause the video and find a point to focus on and look at. and realize that your whole field of vision is really just a big circle. <laughs> uh, it's really the shape of eternity. And it's not the shape of a TV screen or a computer screen. It's a big, giant circle. And in the middle of that circle, you have this tiny little area of vision that we call foveal vision. That's where you see things in sharp focus. And then as you move away from that, things get more and more out of focus and, and less and less detail. Uh, that, that next area of your vision is called perifoveal, and then the outer edges of your vision are, of course, your peripheral vision. And I like to paint like I see. So my area that I want to be the dominant area of interest, I'll put my most detail there. And then as I move away from that area, the edges of things get softer, uh, shapes get softer, more out of focus. Uh, be aware of your, those 
peripheral and paraphobial areas, pick out your dominant point that you really want to focus on and then paint those areas in your peripheral vision and those outer edges like they actually look in your outer vision uh, away from that foveal detailed area. And it'll give you an entirely different way of thinking about it, the way that you paint. So what I'm doing now is just trying to soften edges, uh, create some repetition through the painting. And right now I'm just uh, doing what I do a lot in the beginning stages of a painting, and that's just drawing with the brush. I'm lifting color. I'm not actually putting color down here. It looks like I might be putting a light color, but I'm actually, uh, it's just a brush that has some, that's damp and I'm lifting color and trying to soften edges with my fingers. I do that a lot. When you lift, it's real easy to change it. <laughs> I can go back in with a brush and just wipe that all out and not have to worry about if I put down color there it's and paint it's going to influence it if I don't like what I did or if I want to change it so think about that it's it's a as long as the paint's thin and it's wet you can really just drag a brush that doesn't have anything but just it's just a little water a little damp and it you can try some stuff and if it doesn't work just wipe it out with a brush or a paper towel now here i'm starting to put that little area of detail into the painting it's going to be a figure i also uh, lifted out the shape of a canoe you can see that there i'm trying to decide whether i want to put that canoe in there and whether i have time to do that in in this demo I believe in illusory space uh, as a way to make uh, the two-dimensional surface look like three-dimensional. So what I'm adding is just some cool color behind these trees just to see what it looks like uh, in terms of trying to tr tr create that sense of distance in space. It's atmospheric perspective. It's the way that... Uh, elements in a landscape painting usually because of atmosphere and the particles in atmosphere they get lighter and cooler and more soft edge as you go back in space part of that's an overlapping relationship too which helps create the illusion of distance in space so that's what i'm doing now is just creating different layers i don't think that I'm devoted to those. I may change them. I may decide to, like I said, this is in this freestyle kind of painting. It's you're making it up as you go, which is a lot of fun, by the way. It's if, you, if all you've done is ever just try to copy a photograph or uh, paint exactly what you're looking at, uh, doing this is a little bit more imaginative and a little bit more fun in some ways.